Hey folks, what's up? It's me, Waves here from Slide Nerd. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about the two final things with respect to the touch event. After you see this video, when you go for an Android interview, you will even kick the interviewer's ass. So let's get started with what those two things might be. First, is to how we can block certain events from reaching the child and handle them in the parent. Second, is how we can prevent the interception of certain events by the parent from the child. As I told you, these two are very complex and confusing. If you haven't seen the pre previous two videos, and please go and watch them again because you're not going to understand anything without that. So let's get started. Let's get an idea of how the intercept is going to work. Let's say you have action underscore down, which is triggered when you put your finger on the view, like they have shown in this image over here. You know the normal flow of events very well by now. It's going to go all the way to the on touch for your view. If you return true here, things are going to be handled and no further processing takes place. But let's say you want to handle only the action underscore down inside your my view. Let's say if you have action underscore move or action underscore up, you want to process them in the layout instead of my view. So that's pretty simple. In the on intercept touch event for your layout for action move and action up, just return true over there. That way, the event is not going to be forwarded to your child out here. In other words, they'll get a cancel for the first time. The event is going to be taken by your layout and it's going to be processed inside the on touch event of your layout where you return true to indicate that it was consumed or you return false to let the activity process it inside its on touch event. Again, if you haven't understood this, let's take a look at this with an example. I have made some changes here. If you go to my view, in the on touch event, I have returned true here all the time, regardless of what comes in. In my layout, I have handled the action down, up, cancel, but for action move, I have returned true here. And in all other conditions, there is simply the super implementation which is going to return false here. This simply means that once action move is encountered, all the events are going to be handled by your layout. They won't be propagated to your view. Let's take a look at that in action. Here, if you go to the emulator or real device in my case, just tap on my view. Let's take a look at how things work. Now for action down, things are going to process in the normal way. So here, if you take a look, this complete cycle which I have highlighted is for action down, which is the same thing which you guys have been seeing so far. Let's take a look at action move here. When I dispatch the action move from the activity, the layout is going to have its dispatch touch event called, which is right here at the top. Now inside the layout dispatch touch event, of course, this is going to be printed, which you see there in the second statement here. And below there, the super implementation is triggered. Now this super implementation is going to call your own intercept touch event first. Here, the action move, this part, this case will run. And this is exactly the message that you see here when you say my layout on intercept touch event move. But remember, you have returned true here. This means your layout is going to do the further processing with that. And your act or your view, that is my view, is not going to get those events. In this case, as you notice very explicitly, your view dispatch touch event is called with an action underscore cancel. And your views on touch event is also called with an action underscore cancel, which is exactly what you see in the action cancel statement with this statement running here. And this statement you still saw on the log cat over here. This simply means that the further events are not going to be available inside the view for processing. But by default, I have written on touch event. I have written true here inside my view, which is why you see the statement that says view on touch event returns true here. And then of course the view dispatch touch event will also return true because at this point your control is over here after running the on touch event for my view. Now if you go back, the my layout. We'll finish executing the super dot dispatch touch event and this statement will be run here which says my layout dispatch touch event returns true which is exactly what you see here my layout dispatch touch event returns true this indicates that the view has processed it because we returned true from the on touch event of our custom view things jump back to the activity and it's over but remember in this time the view simply was told that you are receiving a cancel event which means you will not receive anything in the future now let's take a look at the next cycle of what happens when the activity dispatches a new move event over here. Take a look at this. The activity calls dispatch move. The layout calls dispatch move. But now the on intercept touch event is not called. It is bypassed. Rather the on touch event is called for the layout because at this point the Android framework knows that your view is not going to receive any further events. And you don't need to call the on intercept touch event anymore because 
the layout is going to process the on touch event from now on therefore the on touch event here is triggered which is going to simply return true i believe for the action move yep over here in the on touch event we return true for action move and that means our layout has processed the on touch successfully and things jump back to the activity out there now further move events are going to trigger the same kind of response out here now let's take a look at action up all the way now if you go to action up the activity is going to dispatch your action up and from there it's going to jump to the layout from there the layout on touch event will be called but that returns false because here i've simply called the super implementation when action up is encountered for your touch event of my layout and that means things are going to jump back to your activities on touch event because if you remember when the on touch is not handled at one place it is handled by the parent and that's why you see this statement running here ultimately so as you can see the whole idea behind this complete case study was that we can cancel all the further events of a gesture from going to the child now if i make a fresh gesture let me clear this first if i once again tap my view you will see that the down event goes all the way down to the view here and you can see there's the view on touch event down the on touch event returns true and things like that but once again starting with the move event nothing goes down everything is handled at your layout the view simply receives a cancel here as you can see in these two statements to indicate that no further events are coming to the view so this is how you can block the remaining gestures from going down to your view and process them in your layout to explain our last case I have an example which is the dirtiest example that you can consider yet it is the best example to make you understand things there is a scroll view and there's a list view inside the scroll view now remember this was taken from stack overflow where a person was asking some question and here if you see the, the person says that I want if I scroll the list view at that time the scroll view must not scroll so by default the scroll view is the parent which means it gets to intercept the touch events before they are forwarded to the list view and there it processes the touch events by means of which it starts scrolling the screen however from the list view that is your child you can prevent or you can request that the scroll view does not intercept the touch events thereby giving you a, your list view a chance to process those touch events and scroll your list view instead of the scroll view when you click on items or start scrolling on the screen so this is done with the help of this method called request disallow intercept touch event in other words the child view tells the parent or request the parent to not intercept touch events let's see how we can write this so at this point inside my layout in the on intercept touch event i have restored everything to defaults in other words there are no special return types only false value is being returned here by default same in the on touch event as well there's nothing great just the default implementation returning false out here if you go to my view here again the dispatch is the same like my layout which is defaults but in the on touch event i have returned true here explicitly to indicate that that our view has successfully processed the touch event at this point if you run this code let's take a look at what happens now when you go here and you tap on my view you will see that the normal flow of events occur the layout on intercepted touch event is called here which returns false Again, if you go down for the further move event out that we have, again the layout on intercepted touch event is called here. Take a look at that. It's being called here for every single event that is being triggered out of our life cycle. So how can we prevent the interception of this layout by simply going here to our my view? We can go here in the on touch event of our my view, regardless of the case. Now I'm gonna not take any cases in general. I'm gonna simply say get parent here. I'm gonna say request disallow intercept touch event in other words don't let the parent intercept any of my touch events let's see how this is going to affect the complete cycle now now if you tap here on my view let's take a look at what happens the first action is of course action down it's going to go to the layout as you can see the on intercepted touch event is called the first time here we return false but remember that by the time we go to the on touch event of our view this statement runs here which says get parent or request disallow intercepted which means don't let my parent intercept any further events out there so the next event which is your move take a look at how it works the activity dispatches the move event the layouts dispatch touch event is called but now the on intercept touch event is not called anymore for the layout rather things jump directly to the view where they are processed in the on touch event of the move over here Again, you go further down, you see any other action, 
for example this new move here there is no sign of on intercept attachment if you just go and search here these are the only two places where on intercept touch event is being called look at this there is no mention of call anywhere else in other words the first time you actually ensure that no further events are being tracked by your parent so this is how you can use the request disallow in other words this is how we can block the further events from going to on intercept touch event with your view here so with this we complete our full discussion of the touch framework in android and that being a very complex topic, I'm sure that you're going to have to see the four videos at least another two times before you finally understand what exactly happens if you are a beginner. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to SlideNerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. In the next video, it's time to talk about the on-item touch listener of your recycler view and find out what are the different ways you can handle the item clicks of a recycler view from outside the adapter. Have a nice day.